Hey everybody, how are we doing today? It's Eric from Learn Max, and I wanted to look at just some simple objects in Max today. Really uh, kind of a 101 lesson here. We're gonna put a bunch of 101 lessons together. So uh, what I'm looking at right now is just a Max instrument patcher window here. You guys know how to open one of those up by now. If not, I'm gonna wind up putting together like a very, very beginning, beginning, beginner, introduction. I don't know what that word was, beginning. Anyway, uh, some people have specifically been asking me about some program for Program fro, wow, I'm losing it today. Program flow objects like gates and switches and stuff. So I want to demonstrate that real quick. All right, so I'm going to grab a new object. Uh, I'm going to start off. I'm going to create a, a metronome. Okay, metronome objects uh, that, that sends out ticks. Uh, it's a clock basically, and I'm going to have a toggle T for toggle, and that's going to start and stop my metronome. So I'm going to put that together here. Okay, and just to demonstrate, I'm gonna put a bang down here, B for bang, okay, so you can see it ticking. Okay, start the metronome ticking, it ticks real fast. Say I'm gonna change that to 100 instead. Okay, 100 milliseconds. So, I'm gonna start and stop it again. Uh, 10 times a second, I'm gonna get that tick. So you can barely see it going on there. Say I'll do uh, 200, maybe you can see that easier. Start and stop it again. You can see that a little easier. Okay, now to make it do, really do something interesting, I'm going to send that through a counter. Okay, a counter will count those ticks, and I'm going to put them through to a number. Okay, so I'll see what those ticks are. Bang. All right. So I got a real basic thing going on now. I got a toggle to start my metronome, which happens every 200 milliseconds, and this counter is counting those milliseconds, uh, counting those 200. So five a second. Uh, one, two three, something like that. Okay. Now, now I get a signal that I want to, uh, route around. So some different objects. There's two that I like to talk about, uh, called the, uh, switch. And I'm going to have it switch between say three things. And I have another thing called a gate and I'm gonna have a gate between three things. Okay. So a gate, you have an input and you have a, a selector. So let's take our output from here, send it to the input, the incoming gated message. All right, now I got three possibilities. I'm gonna put a couple of numbers here and I'm gonna option click to make this uh, my life a little bit easier. Normally I option click to make my life easier. What's going on? You know, I think the mouse, uh, or the battery is dying on my, uh, um, on my wireless keyboard. That, that would really kind of suck. All right, anyway, all right, so. Now, I'm gonna have another toggle, and I'm gonna connect that to there. By default, all the outputs, they're all closed. Zero and one, one will choose the first outlet. So what, ha what happens when I select that? Okay, I see that basically is sending a one, sends it through there. If I hit zero, it turns them all off. Okay, uh, take myself out of, it, out of that mode, delete that. I'm gonna put a number there, number. All right, so this way I can now select between a couple of different things. All right, bing, zero, come on, zero, one, two, three. Whoops, went real fast. Three, two, one, zero. Okay, so that's determining which of the outputs this signal comes through, okay? Now, let's look real quick at the switch. All right, uh, all right, switch. Now imagine for a second that I did this. Bing, bing, bing. And uh, how can I make this interesting? All right, so I've got those three numbers and they're just random numbers and I have another number on the output, number. All right, now a switch is kind of the opposite of a gate. It's gonna say, okay, of these three numbers, right? Of these three numbers, which of them is allowed to get through? And that's kind of cool. If I say I had like three MIDI controllers, or something like that, and I wanted to, to choose between them, uh, that's a way I could do that. So, okay, let's grab this. Boy, my, I really got like jam on the keyboard to make sure it's seeing stuff. So, okay, um, let's see. This is kind of a little bit tricky. So, say I have it set to zero. No matter what I send through to these guys, none of them is going to get through, okay? If I set it to one, the first one is going to get through, but none of the others. If I set it to two or, yeah, two, it's going to let this one through, but not the others, 
okay? So we've got some real basic program logic here going on, right? Switch allows you to choose between a number of different sources, and gate lets you select from a number of different uh, destinations. Really cool, really, really useful. And uh, there's also some interesting objects called new, the uh, graphic gate, and also known as the G switch 2, and the G switch, which are basically very similar, except you can only have two inputs or two outputs. And the cool thing is they're a little graphic uh, associated with them. So you can attach the control and watch what happens. Zero, one, zero, one. You know, that's better done by a toggle. This is a toggle, this guy over here. T, toggle. There and there. All right, like toggles for this kind of thing. Okay, Z there's one. Zero, one, zero, one. So you can really see, like in this case, oh, okay, that one's going through. Zero is going through. You know, there's zero going through. There's one going through. Really nice graphic switch, graphic gate. Okay, so that was a brief introduction. Uh, six minutes? Oh my God, I spent six minutes with you. Okay, so we saw the metronome. We saw the counter. We saw some number boxes here. We saw the gate. We saw the switch. Uh, metronome, counter, bangs, uh, and some basic patching. Okay, have fun. See you next time. Bye.